Hello guys, welcome to the next lecture on the memory based question. This is the part 2 of the GATE 2024 Mathematics. Myself Dr. Harishkar, you can simply follow my YouTube channel where you can find the GATE Mathematics playlist and I am sure that this playlist will help you a lot to crack the GATE examination in a very simple manner. I have uploaded the first lecture already and you can see many shortcut quicks is available in this lecture as well. Now let's see how you can solve this PY question series. Now look at the first question, this is a boundary value problem and okay, infinitely many solutions are there. If you remember that my last lecture was on uh, my lecture on the differential equation, if you watch this lecture, you can solve this question within the 10 second. Remember, uh, you can put a like on my video if you watch my this lecture so that I can remember it how many are benefited from my videos. You can see what is this equation, this is my cauchy euler equation. So what is the shortcut tricks as I told you if it is a, a x square y double dash plus b x y dash plus c y is 0. You can write the equation directly as a m square plus b minus a m plus c is equal to 0. So if I write this the same shortcut tricks I have explained in the differential equation as well. So what is the a is my 1 so it is my basically a m square you can see it is my m square minus 2 minus 1 this is a minus 3m plus 2 is 0. Now you can see how many seconds you are needed to write this equation hardly a 5 second. So what is my solution is y c1 x square or simply x plus c2 x square. Now what does the meaning of the infinitely many solution? So it is a second order differential what is the meaning of the infinitely many solution? It means either C1 or C2 is undefined. Fine, that's the meaning of this. Now look at that, the first condition implies Y of 1, C1 plus C2 minus derivative of this, C1 plus C2 of 1 is a 1. So C1 will be cancelled out, C2 is my minus 1. So clearly say C1 is my undefined. Fine. Then I can apply the second condition y of 2 that means 2c1 plus uh, since c1 is my undefined so I can simply take the coefficient of this c1. Anyhow it is my 4c2 minus k times derivative of this plus 2 times c2 of this it should be 4. Now the coefficient of the c1 should be undefined I can what is the coefficient of c1. So C1 will be 2 minus K is my 0. So it means K will be 2. So 2 is the right answer of this problem. You can put a like on video if you watch my differential equations lecture. Okay, now very again very surprising that this same question if you watch my lecture on the initial value problem which is available at here. If you watch my lecture on the initial value problem this one gate this one. If you watch this lecture, the same question I already explained that. You can put a like on this video as well so that I can remember it. What is the shortcut text as I gave you earlier? So whenever you have the differential equation this f when it will give the unique solution you can check if it is my bounded. If it is my bounded then it will give you a unique solution. So this is my f what is that del f over del y. It is 1 is will be the 0 minus 2y e raised to power minus y square. What is the modulus of this? It will be 2y over e raised to power y square. Fine. Now clearly say this number should be less than of some number because this number e raised to power y square is a increasing and 1 over is a decreasing. So what does it mean? It gives you a unique solution. Now second is every solution is bounded on its maximum interval of existence. What is the property of the maximum interval of existence? The same shortcut tricks as I explained you in my this lecture as well. When you can say it is a maximum interval of existence if you prove f is bounded and continuously differentiable. Now clearly say this f 1 plus e raised to power minus y square this is my bounded because of this negative sign is a bounded. Also, it's an exponential function, so it is a bounded. It is also the continuous and also be the differentiable. So, what does it mean? 
the maximum interval of the existence is my r is the correct answer so both a and b are the correct option okay look at this another one f is given to be here and g is given to be this find the jacobian okay g is my inverse of the f so i can found the jacobian of the g so that's the same i can found the jacobian of the f at the point f of 2 comma 1 what is the f of 2 comma 1 This is four minus one three, and it's my four. So what is the Jacobian of the f? So I can find the Jacobian of the f. It is a determinant of this with respect to x and this with respect to y. It is with respect to x, with respect to y. Now at the point three comma four, it will be six. It is a minus eight. It's a plus eight. It's a plus sixteen. So it will be the thirty six plus sixty four is hundred. So what is the Jacobian of this? Is one over hundred is the right answer of the problem. But because this is a memory based question, I am not sure whether it's a f of two comma one or only two comma one. So if it is only two comma one, then there is no need to compute this. Then we can found the Jacobian at two comma one. So it will be my four minus of two, two and four. It will be sixteen plus four. It's a twenty. So what is the Jacobian? Of the g will be one over twenty. So it depending upon that whether it's a two comma one or only two comma one or f comma two comma one. Now, uh, as I uploaded my last lecture on the memory based question, this one, this one, and based on the comments of the student, I have received it's a f z scale. So what is the right answer of this? It's a cant two. So it's a two pi iota is the residue. Fine. So can you find the residue of this? It's a very simple. I can substitute this denominator as a zero. So can you find the value of the z? It's a two plus minus four minus eight over two. So that means plus minus iota. I will check whether it's satisfied or not. Minus of two and one plus minus iota plus of two. It is minus one plus minus iota and three plus minus. Iota, that's a root two, and root ten, which is less than of eight because it's a one point four, and it's a three point something less than eight. So I can say, I can return this number as z square, z minus alpha, z minus beta, where alpha will be one plus iota, beta will be one minus iota. So this number will be my two pi iota, corresponding to alpha, it will be the alpha square over alpha minus beta. And corresponding to the beta square, it is my beta minus alpha. Now I can take LCM. I can take alpha minus beta is the LCM. The numerator part is alpha square minus beta square. So the right answer is two pi iota times alpha plus beta. So what is alpha plus beta? It's a two. So the right answer is four pi iota is the correct answer of this problem. So all are the memory based question. I hope out of these four question you got all the four correct answer based on my shortcut picks available in my YouTube channel, Dr. Harish Kar. I will come up with the next lecture very soon. You can simply like, share, and comment on my video. Best of luck, students. Happy learning.